Hi and welcome to this section on working with Kubernetes on AWS. So now in this particular section, we are actually going to look at building a Kubernetes cluster on AWS EC2. So let's move on to our first video, which is going through how we can actually build a cluster on EC2. Now we're going to be using AWS for building our Kubernetes cluster. Now, if you want, you can build the cluster manually. So you can deploy your EC2 instances. You can use the similar mechanisms that we used in the earlier videos to create your entire Kubernetes cluster manually. But this can be a time consuming effort. There are tools out there which can automate the entire process. So the, for the purpose of our demo, we're going to be using a tool known as Chaos. So this is a popular tool for deploying Kubernetes clusters. One of the biggest advantages of using this tool is its ease of use. You just define some configuration files for your Kubernetes clusters and then you're good to go. So this can be easily used to deploy clusters. You can also use the Chaos tool to update your clusters. We're going to be looking into this into our subsequent videos. So in this video, we're going to actually deploy a cluster and then we're going to see how to update the clusters accordingly. Now, one thing to note about Chaos is that it completely works on DNS for identification. So in AWS, the DNS utility is raw 53. So you need to ensure that one of the prerequisites is that you have a domain name already defined in raw 53 because the Chaos tool uses the DNS to ensure that the Kubernetes cluster can be identified from the outside world. So you need to ensure that a domain name is defined in raw 53. So now what are the steps to follow? So obviously the first thing, if you're going to follow along, have an AWS account, decide on the region you want to deploy your Kubernetes cluster, then we need to create one instance. So this instance will be used to deploy our cluster. We'll use an Ubuntu instance. Now, in order to use Kops, one of the prerequisites is that you need to install kubectl. So first we need to install the tool. Once we get that tool, then we can download Kops. Now some further steps. Now to ensure that this Ubuntu source instance can actually build the Kubernetes clusters on AWS, you need to ensure that you have the role which has the desired permissions to create those instances. So this role will have that required privileges. We'll then create an S3 bucket. This S3 bucket is used to store the artifacts required for the cluster itself. Next, we need to define the cluster configuration. So this is a configuration file. This defines what will be the instance type for your nodes. How many nodes do you want? What is the instance type for your master node? How many masters do you want, etc. You then review the cluster configuration and then you create the cluster using the Kops tool. So now let's go to the AWS console and let's go through this entire series of steps to build our Kubernetes cluster using Kops. So now here we are in the AWS console. Now first I have raw 53 open. Now I did mention in the slides that the Kops uses DNS for identification of the Kubernetes clusters. So you need to ensure that one domain name is already defined in raw 53. So I already have one defined over here. So I've actually registered this domain with godaddy.com. And then what I've done, I've defined the domain over here in raw 53 as a hosted zone. I've ensured the name server records are updated in godaddy. So that whenever we actually go to this domain cloudportalhub.com, we can actually go through Route 53. So ensure that this is already defined beforehand. This does take time. That's why I've done this before this exercise. We just have to ensure a domain name is defined in Route 53. Next, I also have one bucket defined. So the name of the bucket is clusters.cloudportalhub.com. So you can create this bucket beforehand. I have created the S3 bucket in the Singapore region. So this is the same region in which I'm going to host my Kubernetes cluster. The next step, what we need to do is that we need to launch an instance. So this is our source instance in which we are going to install kubectl and get the Kops tool. And then from here, we're going to use the Kops tool to actually create our Kubernetes cluster. So let's go ahead and launch an instance. Now I'm going to be using an Ubuntu instance for this demo. I'll use a t2.medium. I'll leave this in the default VPC and I just want one instance. I'll leave the storage as it is. I can add a name tag. In the security group, I'll create a new security group. I'll ensure that there's permissions to actually log on to this instance in that security group. I'll go to review and launch. If you want, create a new key pair if you don't have one. I already have the key pair, so I'll acknowledge I have the key pair. And then let me go ahead and launch the instance. Now let's wait till the instance is launched and then let's log into the instance using PuTTY. So once the server has been launched, it's in the running state and your status checks are complete. You can actually log into the instance. So here I'm logged in to the Ubuntu instance. Now I'm going to go in as the root and then we're going to follow the steps for installing kubectl. So let's first do an app get update and install the transport layer. 
Once this is done, let's go ahead and add the required keys. Next, let's ensure to add this as part of our source packages in our Ubuntu server. Let's issue an app get update. So this will update our system with the required packages. And then let's go ahead and install kubectl. Now once kubectl is done, let's go ahead and download kops. So this will take some time. Let's come back once the download is complete. In the meantime, what we can do is that let's go on and add an IAM role. So this IAM role needs to be attached to our EC2 instance. That EC2 instance will then have permissions to create additional EC2 instances. This will be used as our masters and nodes in our Kubernetes cluster. It's always a good practice to have IAM roles attached to your EC2 instances instead of embedding your AWS keys. So let's go ahead and add the role accordingly. So let's go to our security credentials. And then let's go on to roles. Let's create a new role. So this is for an AWS service and for EC2. So let's choose EC2. Let's go on to next to add permissions. I'll have the administrative access permission given to this just for the purpose of this demo. Let's go on to next to review. Let's give this name as Kubernetes for our role name. And let's go ahead and create the role. Now what you can do is that you can then go to the EC2 management console. In our source server, go on to actions. And then you can go on to instance settings and then say attach replace IAM role. You should be able to see your new role, Kubernetes. Choose that role and click on apply. So now this EC2 instance, let me again just. So now this instance will actually have the permissions to create additional instances. It will also have permissions to view our S3 bucket. Remember I said that the S3 bucket is used for the artifacts for Kops. It also needs permissions for Route 53. So all of these permissions have to be given to this source EC2 instance. Now once the download is complete, let's add the required permissions to the Kops folder. And then once this is done, you can actually go back to your normal user. Let's also issue the SSK keygen to put the public key in our home folder. So let's make sure that the keygen is in place, right? So we have the public key in our home folder. And now we'll issue the command to create our cluster. Now, please know that this actually creates only the configuration files that is required for the cluster. This will not actually create the cluster itself. This is the next step. So this ensures that the right artifacts, the configuration files are in place to create a cluster, but it will not Go ahead and create the cluster. So for now, let's go ahead and issue the Kops create cluster command. You need to ensure the zones you want to create it in. So I'm, since I'm in the Singapore region, I'm using the AP Southeast 1A region. And you also note that I have put my DNS name. So my Route 53 hosted zone, which is cloudportalhub.com. So now prior to creating our cluster, what we need to also do is that we need to ensure that Kops knows where our S3 bucket is. So since we define our bucket as clusters or cloudportalhub.com, let's ensure that we have this environment variable Kops underscore state underscore store. This will be required by the Kops tool. Now once this is done, let's go ahead and create the cluster. Here we specify the zone. Now since I'm in the Singapore region, I'm specifying the zone as AP Southeast 1A. Note that I'm using my Route 53 hosted zone, cloudportalhub.com. Now, please know that this command only creates the necessary configuration files for your cluster. It will not launch the cluster that will be done in the subsequent command. So let's go ahead and first execute this create cluster command. So now you can see that your cluster definition has been defined. You can also see that it says in the last message to finally configure your cluster, use the Kops update cluster command. So this will be the command to actually create your cluster. Now, if you want to get the cluster details, you can issue the command Kops get cluster. This will actually give you the cluster details. So here is the name of your cluster, which is cloudportalhub.com. This is again pointing to our Route 53 hosted zone and the zone, which is AP Southeast 1A. Now here you can also see the Kops edit cluster. You can also see that you have this edit IG, the name of the cluster and nodes. So this configuration file shows you the configuration of the instances which will be used to create your nodes. So let's issue this command. So this is the configuration file. So here you can see that you have the image which is used to spin up your cluster. So this is a demo image. You can also see the number of instances which will be launched for the nodes. So if you want more number of nodes in your Kubernetes cluster, then change the max and the min size accordingly. Please note that Kops automatically creates an auto scaling group with the settings of max size and min size and then launches the instances as part of this auto scaling group. 
This is what gives high availability for your Kubernetes cluster. Since the instances are launched in an auto scaling group, this is what helps building a high available cluster. So let's exit this file. If you want, you can also change the configuration of the master node. But for now, what we'll do is that let's go ahead and create our cluster, right? So now this is actually going to start creating your cluster in the background. It's going to start creating those easy to instances, your nodes, your master, etc., and ensuring that all the necessary components and tools for Kubernetes are automatically installed on these instances. So let's come back once the installation is complete. Now, once the Kiop tool finishes creating your cluster, so you have to wait a couple of minutes in order to ensure that the nodes and master is created. Now, if you actually go onto the AWS console and you refresh your list of instances, you will now see that you have three instances defined. So you have two instances for the nodes that was actually defined in the configuration file. I said there is also a separate configuration file for the master. So there's one node created for the master. So now you can see that the Kiops tool has automatically created the nodes and the master instances in the Singapore region. If you go back to your putty instance, so it says you can use the Kiops validate cluster to validate the cluster. So let's issue the command. So now it's validating the cluster. And now you can see like the normal Kubernetes cluster commands, you get the node status. So you have the nodes over here. What is the role of the node and what is the status? So you can see now your master and your nodes are ready. So you've seen how easy it is to use the Kops tool to build your cluster. It was so simple.